In Activity 7, Crystal Forms, students learn that minerals occur naturally in crystal form. They first construct three-dimensional models of the crystal shapes and then observe the crystal formation of salt. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 7, Parts A through F, Mineral Data Sheet, Glass Plates, Mineral Specimens 1 through 10, and Magnifiers in Storage Containers from Activity 6, Salt, and the Rock Guide. You will also need to provide scissors and transparent tape. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 7, Parts A through F, for each student. Make sure to have the Rock Guide on hand for reference. Make an additional copy of Activity Sheet 7, Parts A through F, and assemble the paper crystals to serve as models. Display these crystal models in the classroom. Each group of four students will need a storage container of mineral specimens and magnifiers, a storage container lid with a pinch of salt on it, and a roll of tape. Each student will also need a pair of scissors. To begin the activity, explain to the class that when molten minerals solidify, or when the liquid evaporates from a solution, sometimes the particles arrange themselves in a particular pattern. When this happens, the resulting solid substance is said to be in crystal form. Ask students, how might crystal shapes be important in identifying minerals? Explain that the shape of a crystal is the result of the definite, repeating pattern of the particles that make up a mineral, and that each mineral has only one crystal shape. Because of this, the crystal shape of a mineral will always be the same, no matter where on earth a sample of that mineral is found. Help students understand that although some crystals are large and some are small, all crystals exist as one of six shapes, and then introduce the six different crystal shapes. Cubic, orthorhombic, monoclinic, triclinic, hexagonal, and tetragonal. Next, divide the class into groups of four and distribute one storage container with the mineral samples and magnifiers and a roll of tape to each group. Then, give one pair of scissors and a copy of Activity Sheet 7, parts A through F, to each student. Note that if time is limited, you may want to assign only one or two crystal shapes to each group, rather than having each group member make all six. Before the students cut out the shapes, tell them to write the name of the crystal shape on the outline so that it will appear on the outside of the model after it has been folded and taped together. Then, instruct students to follow the directions on the activity sheets to make the models. Distribute the lids with a pinch of salt on them and encourage students to examine the salt crystals and describe the shape of the crystals. Ask students, which of your models has a shape similar to that of the salt crystals? Students should have observed that the model of the cubic crystal has tiny cubes that resemble the appearance of the salt crystals. Tell students to retrieve their mineral data sheets and then use a magnifier to examine mineral specimens 1 through 10. Explain that the classroom specimens may not have well-developed crystals, so students should not expect to be able to match the crystal forms of the minerals with the shapes of the models. Inform the class that even experts frequently must use more advanced techniques, such as X-ray diffraction, to determine the crystal structure of minerals. Next, refer to a chart listing the six crystal shapes and the mineral specimens that belong to each category, and instruct students to add this information to their mineral data sheets. Finally, encourage students to add to their lists of the ways that rocks and minerals are used today and how they have been used in the past. Students should describe different physical properties of crystals in order to determine their uses in art and industry. For example, some crystal forms are good electrical conductors. The minerals that exhibit these crystal forms, therefore, might be appropriate for use in computers and other electronic equipment. To conclude the activity, students should return mineral samples 1 through 10 to the individual bags and then put these small bags into the larger specimen bags. Then, return the magnifiers, empty storage containers, and lids to the kit and discard the salt. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.